everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Somebody did bring up whether these people learned, whether the Ukrainians up on, uh, in Brainerd learned their moves from my old man. We when, have uh, Ivan? Yeah. Sharyenko? Yes. <laughs> whether they moved their move. Now, well, first of all, there were no trucks to be won mm-hmm. with Richard with his fish. What was his prize, I wonder? A couple of fishing rods. But we were getting <laughs> lures and fishing rods all, all, you know, for months afterwards after his fish won. Right. Sandy, the GL quitter, said, I've patrolled Quilter. the perimeter. Huh? Quilter. What did I say? Oh. Quitter. Oh. Well, okay. It didn't mean to. No, no. Sandy, the GL quilter, said, I've patrolled the perimeter of the JC's fishing tournament. We checked every bucket that went in, and they weigh the fish right there as they are caught. We patrolled on ATVs. It was 14 below when we went out. Are in they the uh, supporting these guys? They just happen to be lucky. They I even know, know they were there all, the whole crew. Huh? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. It's not a big fish to win with, huh? No, no, three pounds. Three I mean, pounds. maybe that's their. It's the perfect crime. You know, it's a small fish, so nobody will check. How'd Richard, you like that? Richard finally got caught when he tried to win the Prior Lake one, and it was frozen. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled it out of the fish hole. It was like a board. <laughs> big northern, no man. It was Made big... in China. <laughs> it was like a Billy Bob fish. <laughs> Give me that filet fish. That thing was in our Start freezer. Singing. <laughs> he won. He won all the kind. He won in Detroit Lakes and Alexandria and a couple other places when he was driving back. He, you know, come up with some lake and say he caught him there, and and it would you know, bring it into the newspaper or something. But then he put it in the freezer, and it was in the freezer, and the eyes were... Right, kind of wear and tear. Sucking, and it was in the freezer, and the Briar Lake was having a fishing contest, so he took it out there and brought it out of the hole, picked the, you know, ice fishing contest. You know what he did? One too many. <laughs> Just one too many. He no, pushed the limit, didn't he? I think he was praying. Yeah. Him. I think he knew he was praying. I think he knew he might get caught that time, so... <laughs> Anyway, oh. I don't think you can put anybody in jail 50 years later. No, you? no, Especially statute of limitations. He's been dead since 1973. John, go ahead. Yeah, here's two ways they cheat. Allegedly. Uh, they, one, they'll uh, go the day before fishing another spot. and they, You've seen those big 20-gallon coolers, 30-gallon white coolers? Sure. They'll put the fish in there, and cold water like that with slush, it'll stay alive. Then when they go to fish... They, they'll come in with a sled, and they'll have a small cooler, and they can stick a three-pound northern in that, and the thing don't flop around. Uh, he's going to survive, and all of a sudden he appears. Mm-hmm. But this is the best way. Okay, but, but, the but, but the, they said they checked the coolers when they were coming in, right? Okay, yep. okay. here's the second way. Okay. They'll go out the night before with the fish. Yes. And uh, the holes are already drilled. And they'll find that spot where they want to be, and they'll put the fish on the line, drop it down the hole, and then slush the hole over. Okay. And they'll have a stick on that uh, line so the fish can't uh, pull it down. Then they'll make sure they get there early enough so they get to the spot. Then they go, you know, they're fishing around where that hole that fish is, and then they're, they've got it. I thought fishermen were honest. Uh, like have golf. you ever told one how much he, how big he was when he caught it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's come to that. Huh? All right. All right. Well, here's okay. something about Minnesota, though, right? The, the uh, Super Bowl's in town. Super Bowl's here. Not yeah. exactly a bulletin, Pat. Yeah, we, yep. got, we got everything going on. Saturday afternoon, I looked at the Star Tribune website, and I noticed over there, most red, which means at that moment, most red. Yeah. Fishing, cheating, and prater <laughs> was the number. We were more worried about that than the Super Bowl. Lars? No, this is Dars. Dars, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I was at a fishing tournament several years ago where we got loaded up on a bus at a different location, got dragged all the way out to this lake, got dropped off, had more security than the Super Bowl to get out there. 
ran out to the holes that we wanted, already pre-drilled. We had about 10,000 holes drilled. Yeah. Ran out, uh, started fishing as soon as the cannon went off. We all dropped our lines down. And the first time I tried pulling up my line, it gets snagged on something. I pull it up, and there's another line there. And there was about a six-pound northern attached. <laughs> Realized that there was an eye hook screwed into the hole with a heavy line with the fish sitting in there. I'll be damned. Wow. So you beat some guy. Some guy who had done that had to just be sitting there sad as hell that you ended up in his hole, right? What color was, was the truck actually, you won? What, what color was the truck? <laughs> Why could you not have legitimately uh, entered that fish? <laughs> well, because he's an I, I honest chose, man. I chose to be an honest fisherman. Yeah. I got I got myself a free pizza out of the deal and a couple of shots from some girls in bikinis riding around on. Oh, on what the hell? Well, you we came ne- out already. We never found out who uh, who had done gone to all this work, huh? I saw one guy come running, racing up behind me as I got to the hole, and I thought I had a really good spot. And I, I guess he was the one trying to target it. I never did find him. <laughs> All right, thank you. Joe, thank as you, you said before, fish locks are for honest people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Why'd you like that game, Patty? It was a hell of a game, but it's stunning. More yards than any NFL game in history. Yep. In history. Right. Not just Super Bowls or playoffs or in this century in history. Yep. How is that possible? It yep. was a, it was like Big Twelve football, Baylor and Texas Tech. Yes. You know, it was defense just was up a myth. And down in the and how I watching that team. How did the Eagles hold our boys to seven points? Maybe how did we hold them to thirty eight? But how did our <laughs> they? We hold them to Nick Foles look fantastic. Mm-hmm. Third down. Who cares? We don't care if it's a third and ten. We'll throw a 14-yard pass. We had not one but two passes attempted to the quarterback in yes. that game. Yeah, <laughs> and both times the guy was wide open. But Brady, you know, you're not – everybody said, oh, Brady, he can't run. Well, of course, he's 40 years old. He couldn't run when he – was 20. I love how in some cases the narrative after the game was uh, Brady's legacy tarnished. He threw for 500 <laughs> yards in the yes. Super Bowl. <laughs> yes, he did. Uh, and Philadelphia getting a tremendous amount of credit, but they broke more coverages than they had to break 10 or 12 times. There was just guys wide open. Foles had to make better passes than Brady most of the time. They mm-hmm. The the uh, uh, Patriots were somewhere in the vicinity a lot of the times. So there were seven, eight, nine passes where there was nobody in the vicinity when Brady threw it. I never covered a nighttime Super Bowl. Well, consider yourself fortunate. So I never experienced <laughs> what it must be like when they darken the place for these extravagant halftime shows. Well... I can tell you what it's like. A little when you're writing, you're running. Mm-hmm. It's a little hard to see the keyboard when right. it's dark, you know. <laughs> but Joe, you should have been there. No, when I, they were I giving right. instructions to the, <laughs> when they were giving instructions to the audience as to what exactly they were supposed to do with these lights that they had. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they were, and Minnesotans were just sitting there saying, oh boy, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Do, I, do we go left first? That's what my, do, well, do we go left or right first? Which yeah. one? Unbelievable. What, each pass? Well, there was, it was the light show the reflection. that went along with Tim. Tim with the lights. mirrors or whatever they gave them? Because yeah, they, they had to go left, I didn't pay right? any attention to it. I don't know. No, I thought I saw you with one of the mirrors going, uh, to left, right, and then <laughs> uh, we got to go turn around <laughs> and jump down. <laughs> Hokey pokey. They were also telling us how to evacuate the place. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's by a- sections. This was, you know, we were all going to leave in an orderly fashion sure if we were. had a terrorist right. attack. You, if you're here, you go to this exit. You, you know, what are you bothering for? We're all going to be pushing each other out of the way. To out get the of hell the out. way. We're going <laughs> Georgie Costanza, yes. pushing over the women and children so I may get out. Yes. Well, you never would have got out from where you were. Oh, God, no. It was all over up there. Third yeah. floor or third yeah, level. Was, or we were way up there. Now, you could see it from the field. So was that a manufactured section for you guys? Yes, that's, that was took, a temporary took, structure, uh, right? They took seats above 
uh, in the in the if you're in the press box, the end zone to the right, the east end. Yeah, zone, they took seats in the east end zone and put quite a bit of media in there. I don't know how many. Wouldn't that and have been then, a way to go? A way to go. He died were, in U.S. Bank Stadium. Mm -hmm. And then if you were ox ox doing not what just he loves. one ox. But two oxes. Yeah. You were across the street. Oh, boy. Really? What? Even, the, the, the big media room that they had was not even in the building. Wow. If you were across the street. Yeah. yeah That's where of. I would have been had I got a pass. Huh? <laughs> so in that uh, building that the Viking offices had occupied for a stretch, that building across the street? I don't know. Is it the that old been across... Is it the, the old Strutwer building that Polad used to own? I'm not I, sure. I don't know what it was. Anyway, Joel? Mm-hmm. I parked at Target Field. Oh boy! Mm -hmm. Behind the uh, and and Ramp B, behind uh, next to Target Field, behind Target Center. Mm -hmm. Figured I'd walk. I've done that before. Walk to the Star Tribune. It's you know fifteen minute walk there through the Skyway. And then I'm gonna walk to the stadium. Right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. later, a couple hours later, I walk to the stadium. That is further. They had the press entrance area was further away than the. My first walk, it had to be 11 or 12 blocks, and they had all these streets blocked off. So then I, we're leaving. We're on the east side of the stadium, and I'm parked at Target Field. I was a tuckered-out fella by the time <laughs> I got there. It had to be a mile and a half. What time did you get back to your car? Left at 11, got there about 11.40. Mm -hmm. Where are the rickshaws? <laughs> this guy, I could have used a rickshaw. <laughs> yes. Just a minute. Hold that thought. Why did Malcolm Butler not play for the uh, New England Patriots, their best uh, cornerback? Uh, and uh, they wouldn't tell us. Now the rumors are out that they, got, they caught him Tuesday with a little weed after he came in a day late because saying he was sick. And then he showed up uh, Tuesday and while he was here, they caught him uh, with with some weed and also a uh, uh, maybe perhaps a woman in the room. Which uh, uh, not no, not a player. Yeah. Come on. No. You know that was the thing about Al Davis and the Oakland Raiders. If you wanted to smoke a little weed and have a woman in the room, that was fine. Go as get long it. as you right. want on was Sunday. On the, right. <laughs> Snoop Dogg could have played for the Raiders. Hey, maybe yeah, he had some right. left over from the Snoop. The Snoop was, um, <laughs> yeah. when the Snoop walked into the uh, the theater on, uh, what is it, St. Anthony Main Theater? Yeah. Uh, it looked like Pigpen uh, with a cloud of smoke. And he was the <laughs> nicest guy, and he answered all the questions, and he was... We didn't hang, but he was fun to, to yeah, spend some he time was with. Mellow as could be, probably. Mm -hmm. He was tanked. Was he here? Yeah, he yeah, was. He, Rookie and I each got to bond. Coach with the Snoop. Snoop is a new Netflix release, mm -hmm. and they had the red carpet reveal because the Super Bowl. This was the big event that you Neon guys Dion went to? was there. Uh, Troy, I mean Tony Gonzalez. There was a whole bunch of. When did you guys go to this thing? Well, Rookie did that, but Friday morning I did the Golick and Wingo show okay. and first take, Snoop. and he was a guest with Stephen oh. A. on first take. So they got him up to do the morning show. Yeah, he was there. Yeah. My Could guess have been is nicer. He probably didn't go to sleep yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he had the the Snoop character, and then he turns that off and is just the regular guy, and the the Calvin, I guess I should say, uh, seems like he's very well spoken. And have smart. you seen him on Martha, Martha and Snoop? Oh, yeah. that show is. And he, now he's fantastic on that. Show. But after meeting him, I can see why Martha Stewart did that because there's a side of him oh, that's right, innocent, right. naive, and charming. Right. He's right. not just. He's a lot like games. Joe. <laughs> seriously, seriously, I'm not trying to rip you, Joe. You guys are very... I don't know what kind of waiter he is. I don't know if he's a good <laughs> he's a waiter. Bad waiter. Yeah, if he's a bad waiter, then you have that in common. I've never been compared to Snoop Dogg before. <laughs> no. I see some similarities. They seem to be a reach. Yeah. <laughs> Snoop, this is the mayor of a fake town. What's up to say? A fake town? For real? What is those, mongooses? Well, when... I got to say... <laughs> I guess I'll have to wait till the next one to uh, get into the partying because I never got downtown until yesterday. Oh, Never got anywhere close to anything that was going on. There was a couple of times when I had the urge, mm -hmm. but then I thought, eh. I went to a couple of it's things. It's snowing out. But it's the, cold. The only thing I wish I would have went down for in person was seeing Levi flip that snowmobile. That mm -hmm. would have been so cool but to look, see down The down. video of that looked like there were 20,000 people there oh, watching them. I don't even know what the video is. Did you see right. it, uh, Kenny? 
Uh, I watched Levi it on from, tape. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, is Levi the guy who did that great bit for yeah, uh, Crash Paul. Ice a few years yeah. ago, and he stopped it at the edge of some steps? Yeah. He's then, from Longville. Yeah, he, he's yeah, one of had us. him on the show. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. great we all guy. have. He's a wonderful kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, actually, he's uh, probably approaching thirty yeah. Right now. Yeah. Where was the jump? Right on Nicollet Mall. Between ninth and eleventh, I believe. It was believe. on that bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they made that. In yeah, from exactly. Minor. Yep. Now we're going to have Maureen Bosch on at four fifteen, the CEO of uh, the the host committee, and uh, you got to say they pulled it off. They did. They really did. They the did zip a great line job. was fantastic, and the thing on the mall, what they attracted was to me just from the videos I seen was a young crowd, the twenty five year old crowd came down in droves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they pulled it off. They they did a good job. Never again. I don't well, think that's a possibility. Well, they happen. Every, we've had them every twenty six years now, and you know what? Mm. I'll be Sid's age if they bring it back. Sid and I'll be the same age. That'll be a long walk at ninety eight from the Ziggy to tough, the B ramp. It'll be tough. What I do like about this, and Joe, you kind of alluded to it over the weekend with your column is they don't know the real Minnesota. Thank God they weren't here in the summer f- when it's absolutely awesome. You know well, what I mean? Of course. They had to deal with the snow and the ice and all the cliches You'll and all that. Out, and hopefully <laughs> that'll keep these sons of bitches out of our <laughs> state. They never come forever. back. Forever. Never. That's right. A good point. right. I hope they associate. This bold north is a bunch of BS right. invented by Dayton's kids. Right. It's a marketing thing. Yeah. And thank goodness it works so but, we never have to look at these idiots again. But... If you had tried to scam them into thinking they, hey, it's not as bad as people say it is, and then you get weather like we had, yeah, you know, so this was the way to go to say, yeah, yeah you got a chance to freeze to death, but come on up here. <laughs> come yeah. on up. <laughs> well, they yeah. must have figured out how to get people into the game yeah. without a wait. Uh, there was a, there out. was a bit of a wait out at the mall when they were or wherever they were screening people yep. yesterday morning. Yep, the Mall of America. But because once they got on the train, everything was. If you had one case of frostbite, that would have been the national story, and yeah. they figured that out. So congratulations to them; they really pulled it off. And then Maureen Bosch used to be the PR person for the Mall of America. Mm. I don't know how much that had to do with Mall of America becoming the co-host, basically, mm-hmm. but. The, it was a good spot to put all the put the two teams in yep. those two hotels and put all the media out there and because uh, there was no place else you could centrally locate that thing. So sports talk will return shortly. Thank you, Joe. It's partly sunny. A little smoky in here, isn't it? <laughs> little blue sky sticking out now. It was cloudy all day, but now pretty nice. 13 degrees. Absolutely nothing going on locally in the local sports scene this evening. Uh, the Wolves, they won't play until Wednesday when they're at Cleveland and the Wild play tomorrow night. They're at St. Louis to play the Blues. Our, our Wolves played 20 games in 35 days. Really? Yeah, they did. 20 games in 30 days. They had a lot of days. guys named Lil at the game Saturday. Lil. <laughs> L-I-L with the posture. Yeah, right. Little doggy, Lil little kitty, little Wayne, Lil. little Jim. Lil, yeah. a lot of Lil. Little Clarence. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Lil, I didn't get to play this when we were talking about him, but I just wanted to give a little snippet of Pleasant Earth. <laughs> what do you do with your boy Big Snoop Dogg? Hey, let's look at another animal. These are um showing a picture of mongooses. Beavers. Beavers. Oh, oh look like oh my god. He's That's a crocodile. Nature. That's Wally Gator. Look how they stand up on their toes. Like, hey cuz, we gotta get up out of here, cuz. Come on. He got a corner right now. Ah! Oh, uh, whoa, are they going head up with him? They ain't scared of him. What is these animals? <laughs> Give me the ones that eat snakes, son. Oh. Is them mongooses? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. It's about 12 of them, cut. They didn't back the gator up. I ain't never seen a gator get punked by no mongoose. <laughs> retreat, yeah, retreat. <laughs> yeah, back up, boy. <laughs> yeah, we them boys. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. 
<laughs> you know what, Reavers, God. you're right. Such and Snoop yes. could do a show they together. Could. It'd be awesome. Oh, what are these animals? <laughs> Such has animals. the same understanding I, of animals that exactly. Snoop does. Exactly, yes. What, these mongooses? <laughs> mongooses. So did he do those for, like, Kimmel, or what What, what was yeah, the origination of that? For, for uh, Jimmy oh, Kimmel. Those are so great. They're pretty funny, yeah. Back up uh, out of there, cuz. <laughs> for, hey, but, by the way. Yes. Antonio Brown, the best receiver in the NFL, yeah. and Jimmy Butler are such good pals that it, you think those two guys can get up to some no good in the off season if they're hanging out oh, together? Oh heavens, yes, <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> I think those two guys might might have a good time together. The former sports director, whose serial sexual abuse of girls and young women upended the gymnastics world, sentenced this morning to a third prison term of 40 to 125 years. How many we got him up to now then, Johnny? Well, he already had 60 years in federal prison okay. for uh, porn charges, so uh, between 100 and 180 Five years. I don't years think he's so. not going to make Isn't it. Isn't some lifer going to take take care of this uh, for us? I, I'm hoping made. a lifer will step up the, to him. One and, of the fathers tried to take care of him and call Oh, that was a great other. video. It was. He had Hats three, off to he that had three father. three daughters that... Uh, he just, uh, just, Your Honor, just one minute. Why did the cops let him have one shot at yeah. Did you notice how nice the cops and bailiffs were to him yeah. when they had to take him down? They're just, yeah. stay down, friend. Just be calm. And Even when he was on the ground, he was saying, just give me one minute, just one minute. This guy must have been one of the great manipulators of all time, though, yeah. that he got away with it that long. News notes from today. NPR News reporting. Former Minnesota Republican Rep Michelle Bachman has ruled out a run for the U.S. Senate seat next fall. Uh, Bachman's reasoning, as she said on the radio, she didn't have any sense from the Lord that she should try for the seat. <laughs> wow. Bachman telling She could play for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> wow. Bachman. A lot of God, get a lot, a lot of Lord. Of God got a lot of credit. Yeah, so when she that, when yeah. she prayed, was she like, Lord, what do you want to do? And the Lord's up in heaven going like this. Yeah. <laughs> Making the, the, the lock sign with the key and throwing it away. Apparently the Patriots are so unpopular that even God was rooting against them last night. <laughs> Bachman told radio host Jan Markell, it became very clear to me I wasn't hearing any call from God. To do this, was mm -hmm. Brady uh, was Brady's post game behavior uh, bad? No, no, he was fine. Well, because I read this this Piers Morgan fruitcake that writes for the Daily Mail. He mm -hmm. said Brady was an embarrassment and was mean and didn't go congratulate Foles and all this other. Well, behavior. he was he was they were looking for each other, I yeah. think. But yeah. God, there was you know there's a at those games there's instantly five hundred people out on the field. The only person convicted here in the U.S. And How come and nobody says that? Because what Such just said, I, I read over and over and over on Twitter today, and that's the first time I've seen a sane reaction to them not meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. How, how come nobody says that? How come nobody looks? Because people really at, love to hate Brady. Fold said, "I was looking. We were. I was looking for him. I couldn't see him." Well, that makes there. perfect sense. Yeah. How come nobody can put that on Twitter? I don't know. You oh, could have. I was well, way I, too drunk. I didn't oh. know it was a controversy. <laughs> I, I missed that. So. The best tweet, though, of yesterday's game was from an individual named Jamison Kroll, in which he said, just remember when Eagles coach Doug Peterson was a high school coach <laughs> 10 years ago, there was some dad who thought he was an idiot and knew better. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's pretty good. Only person convicted in the U.S. in connection with the September 11th attacks is suing President Trump over conditions at a federal prison where he alleges he experiences psychological torture while being kept in total isolation. Oh, poor guy. 49-year-old Zacharias Musawi has filed handwritten... Is that our guy? Yep, yeah, that's our guy. Yeah. Handwritten mm -hmm. petitions in federal courts, which he accuses the federal authorities of attempting to cover up the true September 11th conspirators. Yeah, I don't want to learn how to land this thing. I just want to... Yeah. I just want to... Fly a little bit. Once right? I don't care about landing. <laughs> Every twenty-four hours, they should open a little door on his uh, prison door and just blast a fire hose in there. <laughs> just blast it for about ten minutes. Uh, he'd have a case then, probably. Masawi was here in Minnesota, was arrested on immigration charges in August 2001 after employees of a Minnesota flight school became alarmed because he wanted to learn to fly a Boeing 747 even though he had no pilot's license. He was in custody on September 11th, pleaded guilty in April of 2005 to conspir uh, conspiring with the 19 hijackers to kill Americans. President Trump mocking Democrats today for their stony reactions during a State of the Union speech last week, even calling it treasonous. 
He said, "Wow." <laughs> he said, that's, that's "Stepping it up a little a, bit." That's a new level, isn't it? <laughs> right for the jugular. During a speech at a manufacturing plant in Cincinnati, Cincinnati, Ohio, he said they were like death and un-American. Un-American. Somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess why not? Can we call it treason? Why not? <laughs> That's crazy. Comments come in reaction to Democratic's reaction. I bet we're State not going to see much from the real Donald Trump account about today's uh, financial. Yeah, I'm wondering what he has to say about the kick to the crotch my 401k took. <laughs> he, uh, he did tweet right after the stock market closed talking about the economy uh, mm-hmm. being good and about the tax cuts supplying more money for Americans right after the right after Wall Street closed. Mm-hmm. Record day. Yeah. But. Percentage-wise, not. But are these numbers from the real Dow or the fake Dow? Fake. Okay. (laughs) Fake. Authorities say a father and his adult son have been arrested after sheriff's deputies found drugs worth more than $1 million in their pickup truck during an interstate interstate traffic stop in North Dakota. The sheriff's office said the son told a deputy they were transporting fan gear to the Super Bowl here in Minneapolis. (laughs) The deputy thought they were acting suspiciously, asked to search the truck. Morton County Sheriff's officials say the 53-year-old man from Vancouver, Washington, and his 24-year-old son were stopped on I-94 near Mandan All right. on Sunday morning. Boy, those troopers in North Dakota are getting awfully nosy. <laughs> <laughs> Deputies say 210 pounds of marijuana, methamphetamine, and $2,400 in cash were discovered, and the two men were Kenny's arrested. right. They're just operating a nice family father-son business. Leave they, them they probably aren't moving... Quite, quite as much of that product out in North Dakota oil fields as they were a few years ago. Oh, they're just going through. Yeah. Um, the pipeline used to be 35, mm-hmm. um, but the guys in Kansas and Iowa and all that uh, wrecked that. So then they moved it up to the Dakotas, mm-hmm. and now the Dakota cops are catching on. So what did they do with the fans? <laughs> no? I thought they were moving fans. Fan gear. gear. Fan gear. Oh, gears. What do they do with By the, the way, walking back <laughs> on the Skyway, as I had to last night from the Dome, uh, there's, in that Skyway there, huge amounts of, paraf- you know, paraphernalia, sure. apparel of both teams. And uh, there were some good people going to be eating some product there. You're going to be able to buy that stuff cheap today. Uh, it's already half off, I believe. Well, it's going to... They had a lot more than they needed. Pat, were you able to go from the bank all the way over to Target uh, Field? They kept the Skyway open till midnight. You made it the whole way without going outside? Yeah, I almost had to call an ambulance about halfway through to haul <laughs> my fat ass out the hall. around here. Uh, <laughs> you need one of those. You need one of those little scooters. Yeah, yeah I exactly. I do. I look out! Look out! There Are was a guy on one of those. I was jealous. I said, "Hey, uh, you know what we should have had? We should have had Snoop. We should have had Snoop Dogg narrate your walking video. <laughs> right. He gonna make it, cuz. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can you slide your tip jar down the bench a little bit so I can sit down? <laughs> I got the word. Boy, there was some bad music being played in the Skyway too, from the guys on drums wanting us to put. Was that your uh, rap like music this? tweet? No, no, no. The rap music was, they put it on the video in the stadium. It should have been that good. Yeah. 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 Or Mrs. Miller yeah. singing downtown. Oh, yeah. You know what they had when I got to the stadium about 2 o'clock in the afternoon? Huh. Hootie was doing a concert someplace in town. I don't know where it was. Darius Rucker. Yeah. Yeah. Hootie. That's Hootie. Hootie to the rest right. of us. And he went... <laughs> He must have been on 40 Minutes, and they were blasting in the arena. And I said, I've spent my whole life trying to avoid Hootie and the Blowfish, and now I'm sitting here <laughs> having to listen to this crap for 40 minutes. You know, I don't I, He seems like a nice fella, but... I love that Roycey calls the bank the Dome right. and Darius Rucker, Hootie, Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> and they've been broken up for like 20 years now. Well, whoever he was. Pat you know. wanted to hear something like this. Get Roycey away from the CD player. (laughs) (laughs) That had to be 30 years ago. At least. Whether you're a sports fan or a sports fan, you're amongst friends here. 1500 ESPN. 
When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. When you know what downtown, Charlie? All the noise and the hurry <laughs> seems to help, I know. Downtown, just listen to the music like of the traffic in the city. Oh, we're playing this to purge ourselves. Yeah, that's sir, this is Miller. In uh, Florida. Super Bowl hit for so Padula. Very yeah. sick. Yeah. Well, and me and him went downtown, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> he was singing back up. Yeah. In Florida, a Super Bowl follow, a 60-year-old injured her boyfriend by throwing a piece of furniture at him while they were arguing about who would win the Super Bowl. <laughs> this was before the game? Uh, during the game. Oh, okay. Cheryl Merrill was arrested after the incident, which happened at 7 o'clock Sunday, just after kickoff, according to police. Merrill became enraged during the argument and threw a whole wooden shelf at her boyfriend <laughs> of five years. She must be a, a strong girl. I saw a picture of her. She looked normal. Like Big that. girl, John? No, no, not really. No. Cheryl not for Merrill. Florida. No. <laughs> Do we know who was rooting for who, or didn't they get into those details? Uh, we don't have those details. Uh, the boyfriend, though, did get hurt. He had a swollen hand but refused medical treatment. Because of the hand injury, he was unable to sign an affidavit by police. Mm -hmm. Merrill, described by deputies as extremely intoxicated, mm -hmm. disobeyed orders to remain in the cul-de-sac while deputies investigated the incident. In fact, while they were there, she got in her car and started the engine. Oh, deputies say now it. she's under arrest. Yeah, at that driving. point, deputies say they went in, shut the car off, and forcibly yeah. removed her. We from gotta the car. get her. She to got the, away with trying to kill him. We gotta get her to the 2019 Silver Bowl. I think yeah. uh, we had uh, we've had two of them. Uh, <laughs> there's one in Atlanta next year. Fellas, I wandered to the window, the living room window of my house, when Pink was belting out the final <laughs> yes. stanza Could of you the hear? of the uh, anthem, and I saw the flyby from my living oh, room cool. window. Really? It was very, very cool. Yeah, are you up on a hill over there? Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're over there on yeah. uh, Woe Is Me Mountain. Yeah. Over by the rink. Yeah. Not far. Mm -hmm. That was the first time that they've used the plane cam that I remember. That was cool. That was really that. cool. Yeah. She yeah. was really good, but I would have liked to have her sing it on a trapeze. Mm-hmm. Well, she was sick, though. Fighting the flu. She was yeah, fighting she the was. flu, so she was Otherwise, kinda... she might have hung from a trapeze there in that stadium. Yeah. That would have been thrilling. In Houston... She's good. she got a great voice. Not only is she fan, good, she could yes, kick your ass with one hand on the other back. <laughs> and I'd let her. <laughs> Beg for it. Uh, Pink, I'm getting a little tired here. I feel like I walked the entire skyway. It's hit time. I'm a naughty, naughty man. Uh, uh, go easy on me. I, uh, I don't want to get the whirlies while you're uh, flying above me here. In Houston, a house theft was just that. A house theft. KTRK-TV reports Joe and Lonnie Harrison say their one-bedroom, one-bathroom cabin is missing from their property in Madisonville. It's a prefab home. It was I like all that. All built, put on property they purchased last year. Is this Florida, too? No, this is Texas, Houston. Yeah, it's close enough. The Harrisons hadn't checked on it since early November, but when Lonnie Harrison went back Friday, all he saw were blocks and pipes <laughs> sticking out. He said he called his wife, who couldn't believe what happened. When he called the Madison County Sheriff's Office, he prefaced his report by saying, this is really going to sound strange, but I need to report a stolen house. Mm -hmm. Sheriff's Office say uh, they're unsure what happened, but they are investigating. So if the whole thing's prefab, you can just take her apart and put the boards on. Oh, the sounds like they the back, backed the trailer under it, didn't they? Yeah, sounds like uh, they just drove away with it yeah. behind them. The neighbor, you, you should have, that, well, they could have used some Snoopy neighbors then. <laughs> Mrs. Kravitz. Another Texas story. Officials with the Texas school district said a middle school student is being disciplined after he hired a stripper to perform at the school. <laughs> this kid's going places. <laughs> in, in middle school? Uh-huh. This kid's uh -oh. going to be a hedge fund manager. Yeah. What's his name, Gabriel? <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Using dad's credit card. Oh, yeah. Do you take Honey, plastic, ma'am? What are these charges? The what in the tips with That's the uh, entertainer? Oh. As you'll see in a moment, that is how he paid. He mm -hmm. used uh, the parent's credit card. Jenny Lacoste. <laughs> Jenny, yeah, it's, you know, guys, it's really not that funny you know, because it's not that far <laughs> off. Jenny Lacoste Caputo, a spokeswoman for Round Rock Independent School District, said the stripper arrived at the address where she had been hired to perform about 11.30 in the morning and realized it was Noel Grisham Middle School. 11.30 in the morning? 
The stripper, Gabe's an early riser. <laughs> the stripper then called the front office to report the prank. She never entered the building. Uh, she said the student used his personal cell phone to call the agency and paid for the stripper's performance using the parent's credit card. Mm -hmm. The student now is facing disciplinary action. Uh, Principal Paige Hadzi Limovic mm -hmm. said in an email, our staff handled the situation with the utmost decorum and professionalism. While regrettable, the incident had no negative impact on any. Does it look like a Russian name or the what? The trouble with a story yeah. like this is we don't get to know who the little brat was that did Nope. It. The hero of the story is the ultra-responsible stripper. <laughs> That's yes, correct. Yes. You're correct. Uh, if the dad had any brains at all, since he already paid for it, he <laughs> yeah. Said, yeah. 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 come on over. Uh, yeah. i got to get my money's worth. And here. the thing with Gabe, Gabe would have hired her just to play video games mm -hmm. with her. And... Did you right. Did, did or you... to uh, show up at Matthew with his girlfriend sitting there. <laughs> oh, wait a minute here. Make sure you're there between between seven and eight while his girlfriend's there. And lick his face as yeah. soon as you walk in. <laughs> uh, did you guys see that? Uh, I wasn't going to talk about this, but it re this story reminded me. In Mankato, there's now a service, a maid service, where they come and they hey, clean your house. You know, they used to have that here. And when they started that here, we were up in Maplewood. Uh -huh. We actually had her come in. No, you, no I'm serious. We did a three-hour show every Saturday from noon to three. And we had her clean the studio for three hours. <laughs> Topless? Well, or, yeah. 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 Topless. Well, she yeah. really did a crummy job because that place was always dirty. <laughs> and she just had a feather brush. Oh, yeah. so. <laughs> Maybe you guys should have stopped bothering her and she could have got some work done. Yes. Where is this happening, John? In Mankato. I see. And they, there was an interview, uh, I believe, is it Mankato Free Press? Yes. yes. An interview with the young woman uh, who started the service and the reasons she started it. Uh, it was very interesting. Actually. Does Rookie's kid know about this? <laughs> well, I'm having a bad cartoon bubble, though, down in Mankato. Well, no offense, uh, farm girls. I'm just having a bad cartoon the, uh, bubble. The woman who started it. Uh, you she, want me to she take was, out the recycling? She was, <laughs> she was a pretty gal. Yeah. There was a picture of her in the paper. She was, she was a pretty gal. All right. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Okay, this is your uh, post Super Bowl ride. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it and is. Maureen Bosch, who was the head of the Super, Bowl, the CEO of the Super Bowl host committee, will be with us about four fifteen. I have a favor to ask you. Yes, uh, ask any her, question you want. Ask her what she thinks. What seriously? What in God's name is Atlanta going to have to do to yeah. top this? Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, it, that's right. It's his mission creep. It's got to be bigger next year. And you know what? For all the stuff about the weather and things up here, there's probably more stuff you can do yeah. than you can in Atlanta. You know? You, yeah. can, you can have a zip line right. in the dead of winter. Yeah. Well, because you got a river. They don't yeah, have a river right, in Atlanta. Right, right. That's true. They're so, a landlocked nothing. I don't know what are what they going to do? do? I don't know what Atlanta's going to do. I don't know. What else you got coming up? Uh, Brent Gessling will uh, talk about the Super Bowl with us and... We're also going to talk about me moving into single digits on the BBWAA seniority list. All right. 1500 ESPN is KSTP, St. Paul, Minneapolis. It's 12 degrees. The post-Super Bowl ride with Royce is coming up next.